This is Andy Perrault for ID Boxing. I am joined by Zelfa Barrett ahead of his first world title charge on Saturday night. Zelfa, huge fight in your career. How are you feeling ahead of it? Feeling great, confident, in happy spirits. You know, I'm just ready to rock and roll. You know, the time's now. I've been waiting all my life for this, so we're here. Would you have ever anticipated it coming about like this? Obviously, Joe Cordina having to vacate, was, sorry, vacate, was stripped rather. Um, a lot of people felt that was unfair on him. Would you have ever thought that on such short notice he'd be jumping in against somebody like um, Rakimov? No, this is why I believe it's my time because I didn't believe it when my manager told me what happened. I was like, come on, man, listen, you'll get prolonged. And then obviously, you know, it is what it is. I feel for Joe because he feel like he'd been robbed. I would feel the same, but, you know, this is a sport, this is the rules, regulations, this is what we've got to do. So it is what it is and Joel's cool, man. Out of boxing, we're cool with friends, you know, and then in boxing it is what it is kind of thing. But, you know, I, he's a cool guy, man, and I feel for him, but it's my time now and I believe Saturday night I'll be a world champion. We'll come on to Joe shortly, but just to stick with this fight for yourself, a task at hand, Rakimov's an extremely difficult and dangerous opponent for yourself, Zelfa. Uh, how much of his career up until this point had you followed or have you seen much of him? Obviously, I've studied him, I've studied him from his early fights, you know, and um, seen him now with Freddie Roach. So, you know, um, he's a good fighter, but a lot of people keep saying that he's dangerous and whatever. So am I. He's had 16 fights, I've had 16 knockouts. You know, um, if you know boxing, styles make fights, fact. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see after the fight when a lot of people say, wow, you made it look easier than it was, or he's a dangerous opponent because, you know, if you know boxing and you see my style and you see his style, it's a good fight. You know, people, some people don't, they just look at a clip of the guy and then look at his record and think, oh, he's dangerous. And I, yeah, of course he's dangerous, he's world level, but so am I. So, you know, he's a good fighter, but I believe in myself. Some people see this as 50-50, so maybe edge Rakimov, edge you. Um, for yourself, you know, speaking to people this week, they've said you need to show something you haven't shown before. So what do you have to do to ensure that belt comes back with you back to Manchester on Saturday night? Just be me. Just win. Just adapt to any situation. You know, it's not going to bring anything that I've not, never been in the ring with, never not seen. So, you know, just got to be me and adapt to every single situation. That's the word, adapt. That's it, really, you know. It sounds so easy, it's not easy, but I just believe in myself and I can do it. Has it helped at all or changed kind of your own mood, being out here in Abu Dhabi, being away from Manchester or being from the cold of the UK and being able to kind of really switch on and just focus on this fight, not having to deal with distractions back home? And you, you, it's just allowed you to really zone in on the task at hand? Um, it's, it's, it's better because you can, you know why you're here. You know what the, why, what the journey's here for, you know your reasons why. And you know, you just gotta be switched on and focused and that's why I know why I'm here. I know why we're doing this 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 interview, I know why we're in the hotel. You know, I'm everything's a reminder of why I'm here. So, you know, it don't make a difference. You produced a terrific display last time out, Zalfa. You got a lot of people talking on the back of that one. So you look forward towards this one. How much more do you feel you have to give? How much better can you become? I can be better and better. You know, um, that was against an opponent who's kind of being negative as well. Like he, he, didn't, he felt my power and he really didn't want to know. And you know, it's hard to stop somebody who don't want to be stopped. It really is, you know. He done everything. He moved. He done well. He done very well. You know, survival mode. He was moving around, catching the shots, some of the shots. Didn't really want to hold because I was throwing up the middle. So you know, he done well. He done well. So imagine when someone's. I'm a great car puncher. Imagine when someone's trying to throw with intention, making them little mistakes. You know, um, they're the opportunities that you look for and that's the opportunities I'm going to be looking for. So a better him is a better me. Of course, you never know how the boxing world could work. This may be your only chance at a world title fight. You may get three, four more beyond this. Um, for yourself, have you ever thought about kind of a pressure in that sense that you have to win because of how life-changing it could be? I'm going to win. You know, there's no plan B. It's the only plan A. Um, I don't cross my mind. My mind just is how I'm going to win, in what fashion, in when it gets tough, I'll get tougher. When if he thinks he can outthink me, I'll outthink him twice. You, you, you just got to believe in yourself. These kind of fights are just about belief because clearly we've got the ability and the skill and the power to, to, to because we wouldn't be here in this, on this level. So all, all you've got to do is believe in yourself and bring out every single tool you've had since you was a kid and you've learnt.
As we mentioned Joe Cordina earlier, obviously speaking to him and Eddie in the build-up to this fight for the past few weeks, they've both mentioned the fact that whoever wins on Saturday will be in line to defend that title against him. Joe's been very supportive of you uh, when I interviewed him yesterday. He said he's hopeful you bring that belt back because it could be a great fight back in the UK, kind of England versus Wales as well. Um, talk to me about that. Have you, have you had any conversations with Joe at all? He told me to smash the punt. That's what he told me to do. You know, like I said, me and you are cool, man. Like, we actually are cool. Message him straight away, yo, you're here, where else are you? Like, in boxing, it's a fight, innit? Putting food on the table for my family and for his family. That's it, you know? It's a big fight, it'll sell out. And that's that, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no beef. I respect him, he respects me. Yo, when I was fighting, his girlfriend was sat next to my girlfriend, cheering me on. And then when he come on, my girlfriend was cheering him on with his girlfriend. So, there's no, it is, it's just literally about who's the best fighter. There's no beef, there's no ag. It is what it is, you know, and yeah, he's a cool man and I've just got nothing but respect for him as a person, you know, and as a dad and as a as a man, you know. It's a funny thing. Crawford was like that with um Porter. He's both said it, listen when it comes to fight time, it is what it is. They've got mutual respect for each other. So, you know, it's vice versa. So, you know, when I win the belt Saturday night, that bridge will be crossed, but you know, no doubt hugging, shaking hands, well done, whatever. Well, Zalfa, just before I let you go, I'm going to leave a final couple, couple of questions here. Um, just your thoughts on the main event, Bivol Ramirez. What's your take? Yo, that's some super fight. Bivol, though, man, he's just something about him. He's, he's, he's just different. He's like, he's got this mad bounce. Don't you remember, like at Oscar De La Hoya, like he, he throws and bounces at the same time, and his distance, his timing. But, you know, Ramirez is a good fighter, man. Southpaw. He's just so cool, isn't he? Just like a cool guy, like. So it's a good fight, man. It's a good fight. Whoever gets the game plan right, I, f I believe will win. You've got Ricky Hatton returning next weekend in Manchester, an icon to British boxing, never not mind to those who live up there. Is that something you're looking forward to? Yeah, of course, man. Hatton's, Hatton's was the guy. You know, it, in Manchester, it's mad because everybody brings brings the torch down. So even like my uncle Pat was the man. That different eras, different times, you know. So I believe it's my time. I'm going to be that guy. From like from like your Hattons, from like your Michael Brodies, yo, there's there's loads over Manchester fighters that have been, you know. So I believe it's my time, and you know, Hatton's a good guy. He always gives advice. He always believes in me. Since I was a younger, going sparring in his gym, giving me little pointers. He can tell a fighter how to be slick, and he was not even he weren't even a slick fighter. And he, he knows that side on position full well, and he's. His fight is awesome when you see him, when you see him, some of his fights he's got and his defence, you know, so, you know, Hatton's a legend, man, and you've got to respect him no matter what. All right, Zalfa, just a final message from yourself. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody back home who couldn't travel out ahead of your first world title tilt on Saturday night here in Abu Dhabi? Listen, I know everyone's going to be watching, you know, thanks to everyone for the support, all the messages, all the comments, you know, everyone who just believe in me, I've got my whole city behind my back, whole of England if you like it, so, you know, thank you, you know, Saturday night and the new. Selfie, thank you. Thank you.